Uh, I actually completely reject the notion of a, of a debt or reparations or anything of the like. I mean, let's just be mindful of the fact that for most of the 200 years that, that uh, since the Industrial Revolution, uh, people were blissfully ignorant of the fact that, uh, that, that emissions caused a greenhouse effect. It's a relatively recent phenomenon. So I, I think it's the, the, the wrong way to look at this. We absolutely recognize our historic role in, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, putting the emissions in the atmosphere up there that are, you know, that are there now. But, but the sense of guilt or culpability or reparations, I, I just I categorically reject that. Now, with respect to the issue of financing, that's, a, that's an important question. We, look, we, are, we, we think, particularly with the, with, uh, with the poorest countries, but not only, that there are, there are real needs. I mean, that there are real needs all over the world that need to be met. And, and there are, look, we, I've said on many occasions that, that, that it, we shouldn't be looking at this agreement simply as an agreement to cap emissions. We should be looking at this agreement as a development agreement and an agreement to help countries that are in an earlier stage of development develop in a way that is, that is uh, sustainable. And the only sustainable development that, that is possible in, in, in the world that we live in now is low carbon development. Low carbon and sustainable are one and the same thing. So we absolutely see this as a, uh, as a, as a development agreement. We absolutely uh, respect and honor the needs of, uh, of, of uh, developing countries all over the world for support. We want to be part of that solution, but it's not a question of reparations. Thank you all. That concludes our briefing today.